Hi guys, I'm Dr. Tara Tobias. I want to welcome you all back to this channel. In this first video, I want to start off 2021 by giving you a little bit of fact and a lot of my opinions on your prognosis. So prognosis is really just information or knowledge that you have today to help you determine how something is gonna turn out in the future. In your case, if you're a subscriber to this channel, it would be your expected outcome if you continue to do your therapy. So as I said, it's gonna be a little bit of fact on whether or not someone can make progress after that famous 18 month mark. In my opinions on why you might not necessarily want to receive that information as fact. I think knowing this information is gonna put you in the right mindset to keep you motivated and maybe even help you set realistic goals for yourself for 2021 and beyond for this long haul journey of neuro rehab. Now, before I dive into all of that, this video was inspired by the number of times I hear or read in the comments someone say that they were told by a healthcare professional that they've met that 18 month landmark and that most likely progress is not possible after that point. And every time I hear that, I get really, really frustrated. And so this video has been in the making for a long time. It just happens to be that the timing right now, as we turn the page and start a new year, I thought it would be the perfect time for this. But before we dive into that, if you're new to this channel and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload new videos. If you're new to this channel, this channel is devoted to providing you with information to empower you to take charge of your rehab and continue to make progress toward a more independent, active life. So if you're new to this channel and you haven't yet subscribed or you've been watching for a while and you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And now let's go ahead and dive into the content of today's video. So as I said, what is your prognosis or what can you expect in your recovery journey. I'm going to start with a little bit of fact, and most of you know this because most of you tell me that you've already been told this or that you've read about this, but yes, there is a lot of reputable, peer-reviewed research studies that have been done that say that after that 18-month mark, after a stroke or a brain injury, when movement-related interventions are provided to a participant in one of these studies that they do not show clinically significant change. But that being said, I think there are very valid reasons why I think you might not be represented in those studies and why I believe that it is wrong for a healthcare provider to make this statement and apply it to everyone based on this data. And so I wanna be really clear that when I analyzed some of these studies, it was through a biased lens. And the reason for that is, as I was looking for errors in these studies as to why what I see clinically doesn't match up with some of these studies that are saying that people can't make progress or someone after a stroke or brain, brain injury can't show clinically significant progress after that 18 month mark or once you enter into that chronic stage. Beyond that, some of the things that I think weaken these studies and why they can't be applied to everyone that has suffered a stroke or a brain injury. First and foremost, a strong study has a large sample size. So that is the most glaring thing that comes out of the majority of the research that healthcare providers are using to tell you that you can't make progress after 18 months. And that is the relatively small sample size, meaning the number of participants that participated in these studies is extremely small in most cases. So I think that that makes it very challenging to 
making some of these blanket statements and applying them to everyone. The second thing or the second reason why I think maybe you aren't represented in these studies is because the inclusion criteria, meaning how someone qualifies or a participant qualifies for these studies is not restrictive enough. So in most cases, not all. And again, please be aware that I was looking for flaws in the studies because there are so many healthcare professionals or experts that are telling people that they can't make progress after 18 months. So again, I was looking for flaws. But again, that being said, that these studies were not restrictive enough to the location of the stroke. So many, many studies did not restrict based on location. Now, what does that mean to you? What that means to you is you might not be represented in that study. And the most glaring reason I can see this just based on my clinical experience and what I see is someone that has a stroke that affects the area of their brain that involves either language, meaning how they understand information, or their ability, their attention, meaning you know how long they could do, attend to a task. Those things might make their ability to participate in these studies or perform the interventions or perform the treatment and also participate in the pre-test and post-test, that might add an additional challenge and might impact their ability to perform a functional movement if a study was looking at some sort of a functional movement. And then the third reason that I think needs strong consideration and is another reason why I don't necessarily think you need to 100% receive that information if you have been told that is what we call like psychosocial factors. It is well documented in the literature that psychosocial factors dramatically impact someone's disability or someone's health or their ability to recover from some sort of health crisis. Pretty much that is not disputed. We all agree on that regardless of the discipline and regardless of the population that's being studied when it comes to health, disability, and recovery. So psychosocial, psychological factors would be things like anxiety, depression, someone's ability to cope or adjust. All those things would be psychological factors that may impact someone's ability to recover after a stroke or a brain injury. The social factors can include things such as your family support, how someone views illness in general, how someone views or their perception on treatments and whether or not treatments are effective, how someone views formal health care and informal health care and whether or not that makes a difference or is effective and self-efficacy how someone believe what someone believes about their own ability to help themselves recover all of that impacts someone's ability to recover from a stroke or brain injury and it is very hard to measure those things so yes we know that that's important, but it's hard to measure those factors. And so that being said, a healthcare provider is drawing a very blanket black and white conclusion without necessarily taking into consideration all of these things I just mentioned. And just on a personal note or what I see clinically, yes, uh, everything I just talked about, about those psychosocial factors, has a dramatic impact on whether or not someone is going to meet their potential or exceed their potential in physical therapy. So now, again, all that being said, are you represented in that study when someone tells you or gives you this information that if you are past that 18 month mark, you're not gonna make progress. I would say maybe, maybe not. Maybe you're represented in, that, in those numbers, maybe you're not represented in those numbers. And then that brings me to my next point to help get you in the right mindset to set you up for 2021 and beyond is what is the risk associated with continuing with your therapy? So we know a lot about risk and benefit just with the whole COVID thing of 2020. Last time I'm gonna bring up 2020, 
we're going to keep our lens moving forward. But so a lot of us understand this, like with the vaccine and everything, I'm sure most of us have either been reading stuff or trying to educate ourselves on this. This is very different. So a vaccine, something going into your body where there may be safety concerns. Yes, there's medications, things like that, where risk versus benefit may be a factor. But it is very hard for me to understand why someone is analyzing this to see, should I continue therapy? In my mind, and again, this is just my opinion, is does it matter? I mean, what is the risk with continuing on with your therapy? Again, are you represented in those studies? Maybe, maybe not. And herein lies the problem. Some people are asking me this question because they legit just want my opinion. Some people are asking me this question because they want a reason to stop doing therapy. Some people are asking me this question, in my opinion, or my thought process, because they want a reason to continue therapy. And in my mind, what if you're not represented in that study? And what if I give you an answer that's wrong? What if I tell you you're not gonna make any more progress and so you stop doing therapy altogether? Again, this is just my thought process, but in my mind, there's more risk with not continuing to do your therapy and finding a reason not to do your therapy versus finding any reason you can to continue with your therapy. And in my mind, you would be doing something with this time anyway. So if it's a time factor and you don't know if you wanna invest the time into your rehab, well, maybe you would be doing this anyway. You would just be doing it to stay fit. So I exercise every day. A lot of people exercise every day that haven't had a stroke. Maybe this is just your form of exercise, but somehow you need to change that script to say, I'm sacrificing something to continue with my rehab and change that script into saying just, this is what's gotta be done. I'm not gonna look for the research. I'm not going to dwell on that one person that told me that I can't make progress. And instead, I hope that I can motivate you through these videos that you just need to believe in yourself and believe that you can be a little bit better and know that there's really no other option. And once you have that mindset that there's really no other option, you just have to do it, knowing that there probably is a really good chance that if you continue to do your therapy, you are gonna get better. And that basing your decision on a couple of studies with very small sample sizes to not do therapy is probably the worst decision you can make. So I hope that this is a starting point for everyone to set some goals, set a vision for yourself. If I say in a video that if you do this exercise, this specific movement will get better, you can either choose to believe that or you can choose not to believe that. And that is up to you, that's not up to me. And again, my thought would be to choose to believe that if you continue to do work or you continue to invest your time into it, you are going to continue to get better. So I hope that was helpful just to get you motivated, get you on track, moving into 2021. I've got lots of fresh new videos that are gonna be coming out to give you exercises and ideas on how to improve your quality of movement, how to improve your overall level of fitness and your level of mobility and improve your overall quality of life. Again, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell. I wanna thank you all for making my 2020 extremely amazing. And I'm super excited about being able to have this opportunity to help you keep getting that 1% better in 2021. Leave in the comments below what some of your goals are for 2021 as far as your rehab is concerned. We're not calling them resolutions, they are goals. So leave your goals or your vision for yourself for 2021 in the comments below so that we can all encourage you along the way. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I will see you all in the next video. You all have a great day.